Hello everyone, welcome to Anacademy. My name is Shreya Singh. I'm an educator at Anacademy. You can follow me on the learning app where you can see my new set of courses, also courses by awesome educators. So moving on with our lesson on the course Introduction to Power Plant Engineering Part 1, let's have a lesson about dual pressure steam cycles. Sounds like an interesting one, right? So let's get on with the lesson. And please don't forget to rate, review and share this lesson. And please do subscribe us on our YouTube channel that is the Anacademy Engineering Curriculum. Thank you. Yes, let's move on with the course power plant engineering part uh, power plant engineering the subtopic which we were discussing so uh, given my introduction already my name is Shreyase I am an educator at an academy uh, the, I am a B mechanical engineering student you can find me at the Anacademy user platform which I am mentioning over here so let's move on with the course introduction to power plant engineering part 1 So the, uh, what are the target audience for this uh, slide or presentation? The target audience for this course will be, uh, the lesson will be engineering students. So the target audience for this course uh, already was telling engineering students, general audience who are interested in thermal engineering topics, people who are interested in mechanical entities, people who are interested in energy resources and environmental enthusiasts. So let's move on to the learning outcomes of this uh, lesson. Uh, you guys will come to know the effect of supplementary heating on overall efficiency of the combined gas turbine or the steam turbine power plant. Then you guys will come to know the combined cycle plants with limited supplementary firing, combined uh, cycle plants with maximum supplementary firing, the advantages of combined cycle power generation and dual pressure steam cycle. So let's move on with the lesson dual pressure steam cycle. Let's start with the first set of slides. Let's have a quote pressure can burst a pipe or pressure can make a diamond. It depends on how you use the pressure. You can use the pressure as hard work for your confident statements. Let's move on. So let's move on to the effect of supplementary heating on the overall efficiency of the combined gas turbine or steam turbine pump plant. Some thermodynamic concepts of different arrangements of combined cycles have been discussed in the previous lessons. Uh, now we would consider a practical gas turbine steam turbine power plant where the exhaust from a gas turbine is utilized to generate steam and operate at a conventional steam power plant. We will also examine how the supplementary heating that is the burning of additional fuel into the oxygen rich exhaust of the gas turbine uh, affects the overall efficiency of the combined plant. Fuel is actually burned partially first in the combustion chamber of the gas turbine plant and then the heat recovery steam generation uh, generator that is the HRSG uh, where it is again uh, burnt. If the network outputs of both these GT and ST plants are described as W1 and W2 and eta1 and eta2 are their corresponding efficiencies then the overall efficiency will be which will be de deriving in our next slide. So let's derive the equation. So this is actually the flow diagram of a supplementary heating gas turbine or the uh, flow diagram or the uh, flow diagram of a GTST combined plant with supplementary combustion of fuel. This is actually the TS diagram or uh, the TS diagram of a GTST combined plant with supplementary combustion of fuel. So let's move on to the derivation. Uh, the eta1 is given by W1 plus W2 divided by Q1 plus Q2. So this is how you get the equation. Then by adding differential to it, or integrating it, you get dou n by dou q2 equals 1 by q1 plus q2 the whole square into q1 plus q2 into 1 minus eta1 into dou n2 by dou q2 plus q2 into dou n2 by dou q2 plus n2 minus eta1 q1 plus eta2 into 1 minus eta1 into q1 plus q4. So this is how you get the last equation. Additional fury, uh, firing of fuel in the HRSG which actually improves the overall efficiency of dou do eta by dou q2 which is greater than 0. That is this equation that is 1 minus eta 1 into q1 plus q2 into dou n2 by dou q2 plus n2 which is greater than eta 1 q1 plus eta 2 into 1 minus eta 1 into q1 plus q4 divided by q, q1 plus q2 the whole uh, q1 plus q2. Since the right hand expression of the overall is the overall efficiency of the plant, you get it as q1 into 1 minus eta1 plus q2 into dou eta2 
plus dou q2 which is greater than eta minus eta2. Now the left hand expression inside the bracket it represents the total heat input to the HRSG which is equal to the W2 by eta2. The inequality becomes W2 by eta2 into dou eta2 by dou q2 is greater than eta minus eta2. With additional firing of fuel in the HRSG, the power output of the steam cycle as well as its efficiency increase and so the increase in the overall efficiency dimi uh, diminishes. Therefore, supplementary firing is becoming less and less attractive. Generally, it is more profitable to burn the fuel in the combustor of the gas turbine plant itself since the heat is supplied to the system at a temperature higher than that in the steam cycle. For the compression process of air, this is the equation that is Tb by Ta equals P2 by P1 into gamma minus 1 by gamma where gamma is 1.4. For the expansion process, it is Tc by Td which is equal to P2 by P1 into gamma minus 1 by gamma. Here it can be regrouped as W1 equals W net which is of the gas turbine is equal to WA into CPG into Tc minus Td minus CPA into Tb minus Ta. Then you have the uh, turbine work of the steam turbine which is Ws into H1 minus H2. By energy balance equation you get Q1 equals Wa CPG into Tc minus Tb plus Te minus Td which gives the efficiency or eta as WGT net plus WST the work of the steam turbine and work of the gas turbine network of the gas turbine divided by Q1. So let's move on to the combined cycle plants with limited supplementary firing. Supplementary firing raises the temperature of the exhaust gas to 800 to 900 degrees centigrade. Relatively high flue gas temperature raises the condition of the steam to 84 bar 525 degrees centigrade thereby improving the efficiency of the cycle. So you can see here I have given a uh, table which is uh, the Example of a combined cycle plant with limited supplementary firing. This is the fuel and this is the natural gas or the you can see here fuel is to natural gas. The fuel which is used is natural gas. The steam turbine output is given to be 69.1 megawatt. The gas turbine output 78.3. The station service power is this. The heat input to the gas turbine is this. The heat input to the supplementary firing unit is this. The efficiency of the gas turbine cycle is this. The energy in the exhaust is this. The efficiency of the steam cycle is this and the net efficiency of the plant is discussed like this. Let's move on to combined cycle plants with maximum supplementary firing. Maximum supplementary firing refers to the maximum fuel that can be fired with the oxygen available in the gas turbine exhaust. The steam cycle is conventional with reheat and regeneration. Hot gas turbine exhaust is used as a combustion air, regenerative air preheater is not required. However, a fresh air fan which makes it possible to operate the steam plant even when the gas turbine is not in operation increases the availability of the unit. The use of large supplementary firing in the combustion chamber systems with high gas turbine inlet temperature causes the efficiency to drop. For this reason, combustion chamber plants or the combined cycle plants with maximum supplementary firing are only of minimal importance today in comparison to the simple combined cycle installations. They however have two advantages that is the coal can be burnt in the steam generator as a supplementary fuel and it also has a very good part load efficiency. Moving on to the advantages of combined cycle power generation. The worldwide demand for combined cycle power plants is growing dramatically while some experts also forecast explosive growth over the next decade. So what are its advantages? It may be summarized as follows. The high overall plant efficiency. The efficiencies exceeding 50% can be attained. Low investment cost because 2 by 3rd of the output is produced in a gas turbine and only 1 by 3rd in a simple steam turbine. The investment costs required are approximately 30% less than those for a conventional steam power plant. Small amount of water required. The amount of cooling water required is only about 40 to 50% as much as for a steam plant. Great operating flexibility. The steam cycle makes it possible to start up and shut down the plants quickly which also affects efficiency in a positive direction, reducing the startup losses. Phased installation. Because the gas turbines can go into operation much sooner than the steam plant, installation in stages 
is possible. The cast turbine plant can keep on generating power as the steam plant is under construction. This makes it possible to adjust the growth in demand for energy in a grid. Later, a coal, a coal gasification unit can be installed if there is too sharp a shark or an increase in the price of oil or gas. Simplicity of operation. It is simpler to run than a conventional steam power plant. Moreover, because combined cycle plants are generally operated fully automatically, they are especially, be, especially suitable for use where operating staff is less experienced. Low environmental impact. Gas burning combined cycle plants in particular are ideally suitable for use in heavily populated regions because of their high efficiency and low emission level of pollutants. In particular, very low nitrogen oxide levels of clean combined cycle plants are one of their most attractive features. Moving on to advantages of cogeneration of heat and electricity. The good thermodynamic properties of Combined cycle plants are highly suitable for co-generation of heat and electricity. Electrical yields of more than 40% are quite common in industrial or heating or industrial power plants with back pressure turbine. Large output combined with high cycle efficiency, low emission level and low investment cost are the main attractive features of combined cycle power generation. It also helps in the division of the expansion process in two temperature ranges that is 1100 to 550 degrees centigrade and also in the achievement of high overall efficiencies exceeding the 50% range. Moving on to dual pressure steam cycles, Rankine cycle is required to be split in order to decrease the irreversibility involved in the heat transfer between the hot exhaust gas and the water or steam. So you can see uh, in the uh, <coughs> Next figure I'll show, you can see the diagram which indicates the heat flow from the flue gas to the water steam cycle. It can also be seen that more heat can be extracted from the exhaust gas if the steam pressure is lower. So uh, the T0 by T that is the temperature ratio you can see in the next uh, slide, it is actually a function of Q. It is actually seen that at a high steam pressure, the temperature difference or the irreversibility is reduced in the temperature region and the losses are dominant in the lower temperature region. At low steam pressure, the losses in the high temperature region prevail. Thus, there is an optimum steam pressure when the sum of the areas A plus B plus C is at a minimum, thus minimizing the exergy loss. You can see uh, where the two streams occur, the differences between the two streams occur is called as pinch points, that is X25 and D21 and they are also called as uh, tem sometimes called as temperature approach. You can see this is actually a schematic diagram or a flow diagram of a dual pressure steam generator. It is actually used to apply two stage steam turbines. There are two separate boilers within the boiler casing, namely the high pressure boiler which applies the high pressure turbine. The exhaust steam from the high pressure stage of the turbine is then directed to the low pressure turbine. Steam from the low pressure turbine, you can see here low pressure. Steam from the low pressure boiler is directed to the low pressure stage of the turbine. Each boiler they comprise of the usual economizer, evaporator and the superheater sections you can see here. It is actually a repetition but it is applied to the dual pressure steam cycle and you can actually see that by comparing these figures the temperature difference between the gas side and the steam side in the final pressure cycle is considerably smaller than in the single pressure cycle. This gives the dual pressure cycle a considerable thermodynamic advantage since the smaller the temperature difference between the two streams for a given heat transfer rate, the smaller the degree of irreversibility external to the steam cycle, hence the greater the amount of work which may be able to be produced. However, smaller the mean temperature difference, the larger the amount of heat transfer surface that would be required to affect the heat transfer rate. So this is what I was telling about. This is actually the flow diagram of a simple HP and LP turbines. You can see the HP and LP turbines. This is actually the TQ diagram which is given over here. This is the TS diagram and this is the TQ diagram which is given over here. This one and this is actually the TS diagram. This is the TS diagram. This is the TQ diagram. So you can see here two cycles present over here and the exhaust gas you can see the 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And this was what I was talking about the graphs. The exhaust heat flow to the temperature and the exhaust heat flow to the temperature ratio. You can see the 
rising of P1 which is actually the straight lines and the P1 is actually in the dotted lines and P2 is actually in the straight lines. You can see the similar here.